Hi there, this is Erica Marilyn. I'm the founder of Perfect Legal Video. And joining us today is attorney Brian Jones out of Ohio. He is a criminal defense attorney. And today we're going to be talking about firearm rights restoration. Thank you so much for joining us, Brian, and welcome. Hi, Erica. It's good to talk to you again. It's always great to talk to you. So let's jump right in to firearm rights and uh, just talk about how these rights would be taken away from us to begin with. Can you give us a few scenarios? Sure. So any felony crime of violence is going to create a weapons disability. That's the phrase that we use when we talk about stripping somebody of their Second Amendment right to possess or own a firearm. So any felony crime of violence and any misdemeanor crime of violence that is also a, a crime of domestic violence. So those offenses will all eliminate somebody's right to own or possess a firearm. Additionally, any civil protection order will also eliminate somebody's right to own or possess a firearm. Wow, that's, that is, um, it's really interesting. It's good to know how these rights get taken away from us to begin with. Now, if they are taken away, um, is there any way to get those rights back? I'm sure that it, it depends on the circumstance, but um, you always have a lot of great knowledge on this topic. So let us know. Yeah, so Erica, there's, there's two overarching areas that we have to be concerned with when we're talking about restoration of your Second Amendment rights, federal and state. And they both have different ways that you have to go about having your rights restored and you have to have them restored under both categories. So in the federal realm, we're talking about expungement of, of a conviction, um, the setting aside of a conviction, uh, pardon for the conviction or a formal civil rights restoration process. And that's there's a state statute that governs a civil rights restoration. Under state law in Ohio, your your firearms rights can be restored by operation of law, um, by sealing the record of your conviction, although those crimes of violence and those uh, misdemeanor crimes of domestic violence often cannot be sealed. Um, you can get formal relief from disability, pardon. In some circumstances, your rights are automatically restored or you have to have that criminal conviction set aside. Now, if I plead to a charge, could I lose my rights to have guns? Yes. If you enter a guilty plea to a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence or a felony crime of violence, your firearms rights will be automatically terminated. Forever? Or is it, does it just last a certain amount of time, just like a, you know, maybe a stay in jail would be? Um, how long would would that usually last? Yeah, so under federal law, it is forever until you have your rights restored. Um, some st it, it varies by the state statute that you're convicted under, whether there's an automatic rights restoration um, in that circumstance. I should also say, um, if you are under felony indictment, you are put under a weapons disability. And if you have a, a felony drug conviction, you are also put under a weapons disability. Well, that is really, really interesting. Do they actually take your firearms away and confiscate they, them? They do, Erica. They will come to your house um, with a court order and they will search your house for your weapons. Um, you know, in practical application, um, officers are often willing to take the uh, person's word that they have turned over all their weapons. and. Uh, it's such a severe consequence if you're caught under a weapons disability in possession of a firearm. It's a felony of the third degree uh, for that offense, just for possessing the weapon under Ohio law. So um, yeah, those guns are confiscated and they're stored at the local sheriff's department. Wow. And so I, that, I, I, it hadn't occurred to me that they actually take your property away and, and keep it. And, do you get 
those guns back when you're done serving your term? You can, you can do a transfer of ownership to give your guns to somebody else if you are under that weapons disability. And in some circumstances, you can even transfer the ownership of those firearms within the same household. But you have to submit a plan to the court detailing how you're gonna ensure that the person who has the weapons disability isn't going to have access to those firearms. And that's an area that we do a lot of practice in, in designing these plans to ensure and, and convince the court and settle the court's fears that the, the person under a weapons disability doesn't access those guns. Wow, that sounds like a lot of moving parts. I'm glad that you guys are there too, to handle the situation. Um, how much does this typically cost? Erica, these processes can be very expensive, which is why you want to fight these charges at the outset. And if maintaining your federal firearms rights is a key uh, goal for you in your defense of criminal charges, uh, you want to make sure that your attorney is aware of that because it can be a bargaining chip in plea negotiations. Um, there are filing fees for filing all the motions and petitions and documents that are necessary to get your rights restored. And in some cases, if you've been convicted and the only way that's available for you is a set aside of that conviction, first you have to hire an attorney to have the conviction set aside and you have to find legal grounds to do that. And then you have to litigate that case all over again. So it's really having to litigate two cases in one. It sounds very complicated. Um, are there any cases where people lose their rights forever? Well, there are, yes. So the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, the, the felony crimes of violence absolutely terminate your right to possess a firearm uh, for the rest of your life, unless there's a process pursued to have those rights restored. Wow, um, and it sounds like you get a lot of these cases and you know how to handle them. Um, how many of these cases would you say you can actually get somebody their rights back to, to have firearms? Well, Erica, what we do is we make sure that we vet the cases that we accept so that they have at least some likelihood of success. I don't have any interest in taking somebody's money and, and pursuing a futile effort just to, um, you know, collect their attorney fees. So in, in our office, we have a, a set procedure that that initial consultation for somebody who is seeking to have their firearms rights restored pays a consult fee. And what we do is with that consult fee, we investigate uh, their situation and we find out if there's any possibility of, of succeeding in that at the outset. And that's the discussion that we have at the consultation. These are your options. These are the likelihood of success. Certainly, um, you know, individuals who have drug convictions that, um, you know, they need sealed or, um, you know, they need to go through a federal rights restoration process because they had a, a felony drug conviction or they need some sort of other relief from disability. Um, those are really high success cases, especially if you've got a substantial period of, of uh, sobriety under your belt, you've demonstrated that you've gone through rehab and you've turned over a new leaf. Those are really high rate of success cases. The ones that are most difficult are obviously the ones where there's no other option other than to withdraw a plea or try and get a conviction set aside and then we have to go back and relitigate the case. You know, honestly, like from all these interviews that we've had, one of the things that I have found uh, that has been awesome about your law firm is that you really do sit down with people and talk about what the likelihood is of um, you know, of winning and, and what the different strategies should be. And you don't sugarcoat it. You really tell people, you know, w how you think it'll go. Obviously you can't make any promises, but I, I mean, it's always, it seems like it's always something that you do is to make sure that people have the realistic view of what could happen while you're still trying to make sure that they get the best possible outcome. Erica, I had a mentor right after I came out of law school. And 
what he told me was that my reputation is the most valuable asset that I own, even more valuable than my bar card, even more valuable than my uh, Juris Doctorate degree. And my reputation has always been the most important thing to me in my professional realm. So I've always held that in the highest esteem for myself. What that has gotten me over the years is a positive reputation with prosecutors, judges, um, and my peers in the legal community, such to the extent that now, um, you know, we have we have enough cases. We're always, you know, we're always looking to take on new clients, but I'm not the attorney that's looking to, you know, give you a low cost rate because uh, I need to get more cases in the door. Uh, I don't have any interest in, in you know, extracting money from individuals um, because we have good cases, we have good clients, um, and we make sure that we only take clients that we can truly help and provide a service to. And you know what, I think that that comes um, not only from you having uh, s taken such good care of making sure that you work with integrity, but also, you know, people don't often think about this, but working with a financially viable firm is you know, really important because you're not desperate. You're not trying to take every single case and spend time on, on losing cases so that you can't really uh, spend time on the, on the cases that are going to um, you know, really have the best possible uh, chance of winning or at least, you know, giving them a, a different life or, you know, than what they might get if you weren't there working with them. So, I mean, it, I think that it's, it's pretty amazing um, that people really get both uh, the best of both worlds when they're working with you. They get a financially viable firm that isn't taking everything and wasting your valuable time and resources on small cases that aren't going to amount to anything. Um, and also somebody that really takes care and making sure that they work with integrity and they tell people the truth as, as much as they know it and give them the best possible options. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And that's why, that's why we take such good care of our clients. We think that above all, our clients are the most important individuals in the criminal justice system. The people that are accused, the people that have had their rights stripped away from them, oftentimes um, wrongfully. And we wanna make sure that those individuals uh, get their constitutional rights back because men and women for centuries have fought to give us those rights and protect those rights since the foundation of this nation. And I think that that's so important. You know, as many problems as we have, and you will never hear from me uh, silence when it talks about when I when it comes to talking about problems with our criminal justice system. But when you look at it around the world, when you look at the rights that we have compared to those in other countries, uh, it really is the best possible situation uh, on this earth in in this universe. And it's it's my job to make sure that everybody has those rights protected to the to the highest extent. I'm going to take that job very seriously. Well, I know that you do. And I know that your clients are very lucky to have you. And so um, with that, I just want to encourage everyone who has a question on a criminal defense matter, um, if it has to do with firearms um, or any other type of matter, please give the office of Brian Jones a call. They are very knowledgeable. They work every single day in the courts to find the best possible solutions for their clients. And they do it with a great deal of integrity. And so you'd be lucky to have them. And they, uh, they really do love their clients and care for them and, and, and make sure that they uh, really improve lives by helping people in the justice system. That's why our motto is defending, our, defending your rights as we would want ours defended. I love it. And thank you so much for joining us today, Brian. This has been very, very informative. And I know a lot of people are going to enjoy watching this interview. Thank you, Erica. Have a good day. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.